Oh, definitely uh, the Czech paddler in, in uh, C1000. He was second in, in Rachitza with his own course and uh, won the 500 there. So definitely a, a young guy that's uh, going to be good for the next long while. And we look to have the starting as soon as we can of the K2 2000. Yeah, they're still circling above the line, staying warm. Yeah, it's getting ready to go. It's interesting to see the uh, the different warm up protocols of these uh, of these boats. You know, the some of their some of these guys do lots of sprints. Some of them do almost nothing, and they just sort of seem like they're just paddling really, really slowly up to the line. And their first hard stroke is going to be the first stroke of their of their race. Yeah, yeah. It's a good shot of uh, Maxime Beaumont and Sebastian Juve in lane eight there from France. A little bit of a mix-up in that K2, as you mentioned. There's like three or four hybrid crews here in this race. Of course, can't, can't ignore the uh, the crew of Postergray and Diachenko from Russia. Yeah, These guys are the class of the field. Yeah, I think the whole paddling community is in awe of these guys right now, uh, just trying to figure out how they go so fast. Because they're not that big, are they? No, they're really not. We were at the same hotel with them. We eat din lunar, di dinner and lunch beside them every day. Sorry. And uh, they don't stand out as being huge guys. They're just uh, obviously very fit, very strong, but... Uh, not uh, giants by any means. And none of these guys are very big, though, to be honest. I mean, they've all got muscle. Uh, and I think across the board, the, the Russians certainly have their complement. Uh, but something's changed a little bit, I think, with regards to specifically kayak and maybe just K2-200. Uh, but these guys are not really, really big. They're really quick. And it's a different athlete, you know, that's quick and really big. Yeah. Maxime Beaumont might be an exception to that. He's quite tall. He's, uh, you know, over six feet, probably six foot two. Uh, but a guy like Ryan Cochran here on your screen, he's uh, he's small and quick, and uh, he can't move a tremendous amount of weight, but he can move his weight really, really fast. So well, that's uh, quite quite big, isn't he? Yeah, Etienne's about my size. He's one of the medium guys. He's he's quite strong for his size. Uh, but I think I, I'm going to be out of it. I think the quickness is really the the more important, at least for the first half of the race. I think you need to have a nice balance. So uh, maybe we'll see that from Ryan and, and Etienne. You know, you a nice complement of quickness in the front and strength and power in the back. And one of your competitors for many, many years, uh, Ronnie Rao, he uh, keeps going on forever. Yeah, a good buddy of mine. He's using a Bracha paddle, which is something new for him. He's always used the FES. Ronnie and I have had lots of great races together, mostly in K1 500. Uh, we actually had a pact at one point that uh, he wouldn't race K1 500 and I wouldn't race K2 500, but he broke that in 2009. Is that legal? <laughs> and, uh, and won the Germany's first ever, actually, K1 500 meter uh, world championship, which is uh, one of those crazy stats in our sport, that, and he's the only one. Um, but uh, some some real talent, lots of uh, good friends in this in this final. Lane seven, Miguel Correa and Ruben Rosola from Argentina, really really strong semi yesterday. And uh, I raced against Miguel's brother Javier for many many years in K1 1000. Yeah, I think they were fifth or sixth at the Olympics. So a great result for them, and they're continuing to, to train hard and then get good results. And can, can someone go under 30 seconds? Have they, have they almost reached their potential? I think they're pretty close to it. I don't know if under 30 is going to happen. Not today, soon. that's for sure. Yeah, big head. <laughs> it's cold water and uh, big head. And I think if you get the you know perfect conditions and maybe some quick thumb on the watch, then uh, it's possible. But lane yeah. one coming in last into the to the gate yeah, there. Looks like Poland's trying to sit back in the gate. I don't know if that's legal. I hope the judge can see that. A good shot at Cochran and Morneau. First A final for Etienne Morneau. Let's see if he can make it happen. Watch the start from lane one here. I think you're going to see a little bit of a false start. Their boat's not all the way in. <laughs> We're also the police up here. <laughs> the cops. The last a couple of weeks ago, we saw uh, Dijek and Postigay. They got a, a lousy start, and they missed it afterwards. But they, they, they said it was no problem. At least we came through in the second half. And they're off anyway. Their paddles are up. They, they had a good start, start today. I think they're ahead already. Fran France as well. There's Ryan, Ryan Cochran. Cochran. Yeah, always a good start from him. Lots of strokes from the French crew, but the Russians really, no, already they have no up, rivals. They? But the Germans are really, really kind of a second place. I think they can they can hold on for that silver. we got the Swedes up there that we didn't even Canada lane two in there for a medal as well. They this is so 30 close. Meters it's to go. It's definitely Russia leading or winning. Oh, that's a take. I think I'll call Germany and Sweden for second and third. Definitely Ronnie Rao and Jonas Ems, both K1 200 meter world record or world uh, champions in their own right in K1s. And your compatriots be proud of themselves? I think they're there right in there for a medal. I mean, you always want to get on the podium, but being close is, is good as well. And they were right in the thick of things, and that's uh, good, good form for them.
but definitely the Russians were the class of the field there. It uh, didn't wait to the end to win it this time. They were out from the start. It's almost two different races there, Russia and then everyone else. And they, they don't paddle that quickly, do they? No, it's more of a slow, like, low power stroke. They're, uh, they're getting a lot of grip. I think they've got, you know, they're sort of in a different gear than the rest of the... Oh, let's see here. Second, definitely Germany. Third, yeah, I'm going to stick to Sweden, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, Richard Dober and Ugg Fresnel in, in fourth. Really, really tight finish there. You can see those Russians really sitting up tall and putting tons of pressure through the middle of the stroke, which is going to provide them with that gear that I was talking about. It's almost like a tighter technique where their that leg drive is really, really important, and they're focusing less on hitting the water really, really powerfully and focusing more on pulling it through with a tremendous amount of power. Yeah, they've definitely figured something else that uh, no one else has. And, uh, it's like the... Well, all the, the world is going to try to catch up. All the catch will be analyzing it and saying, yeah. and not every athlete can do that. It's important to note that you know if you've if you've got that the ability to put a tremendous like the number of, of watts they're putting on every stroke is just crazy. So here's the uh, the final, Russia, top spot, Germany, Ronnie Rao and Jota Sems and in, in second.